But here we are in Doncaster, and we're in a place where there are three parliamentary constituencies, and one of them, one of them went Conservative in 2019. And Nick Fletcher is the first Conservative Member of Parliament in the Doncaster area for 55 years. He represents the Don Valley, and if you believe the pollsters, he's going to get wiped out at the next general election. They're all going to get wiped out at the next general election. I did say, if you believe the pollsters. But what is for certain is that for Nick's future in politics and for the Conservative Party, the economy will be at the heart and centre of how we vote in the next general election, which will come up at some point in the last half of next year. Nick, thank you very much indeed for joining me here on GB News. And I understand this building, this club, means rather a lot to you. Yes, that's right, Nigel, and thank you very much for having me. I uh, met my wife here some 33 years ago. I uh, hope I've got that date right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I actually, uh, the night of my wedding, we had in, in this actual room. Um, my, my father worked here, both my brothers worked at ICI Fibers, which is um, the, the place that we are now, and uh, my, my mother-in-law worked here too. So, yeah, uh, lots of fond memories at this place. Good. Well, that's the easy bit done with. Yep. <laughs> uh, Nick, you know, your constituents, whether they're working, retired, uh, you know, running a small business, how do they look at this budget today? I mean, it's all well and good saying that if you're in the top 1% of earners, you can put more money into your pension scheme. And yes, it's a relief that the fuel duty escalator has not kicked in and it's not going to cost any more to fill the car up. But if you want to drink a glass of wine at home from the 1st of August, if you want to buy a packet of fags, uh, I mean, actually, actually, your income allowances have been totally frozen, dragging a lot of people like nurses into 40p rates of tax. I mean, let's face it, however sunny and optimistic Jeremy Hunt may have been, it's pretty tough for your constituents still, isn't it? Well, I mean, the first thing you could do, Nigel, is stop smoking. I mean, that would save you an awful lot of money every week. I thought the Conservative Party believed in freedom of choice. You sound like a choice. big state socialist to me. Well, there's a certain amount of personal responsibility there as well, isn't there? And I'm all for that too. I mean, the doctors uh, tax, as we've called it, with the pension. Look, if, if you're not, people are not getting their hip replaced, if they're not getting the surgery that they need, and they're not getting it because it's not worthwhile, GPs, I mean, and, and surgeons going to work because they're taxed absolutely unbelievably high, then this is actually a no, way no, forward. No. And somebody who's on an operating table is not really going to care. They're no, just going to Nick, get I get your for. point. If you're in the top one percent of earners, then today's been quite good news, at least on that regard. But what about everybody else? Well, as I say, I think it's been very, very well for everybody else who's waiting for that operation to be done, because obviously those waiting lists will uh, drop now. If it but works. It will work. I've had that. Uh, I speak to consultants, and it's definitely an issue. So, yeah, I mean, obviously I don't need to talk about the top 1%, but that's how it will affect the, the, the people of Doncaster. They will be able to get right. their operations. So that's good news. And GP appointments, will they get those as well? Well, hopefully so. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it, there's an awful lot of work going off with GPs at this moment, with the GP practice, and I spend an awful lot of time with them. Obviously, my uh, email inbox is full of complaints about GPs, but I'm actually going out and seeing these GPs, and I'm sitting down with them and saying, look, how can we make this better? I mean, one of the easiest things that GPs can do is make it easy for people to actually get in contact with them. People just want to talk and don't want to be sat on a line for half an hour at 8 well, o'clock okay. in the morning. But so if we I'm, are doing that. But if I'm in business, Yes. Yeah. Say I'm a medium-sized business, uh -huh. I'm employing men and women, I'm making a reasonable profit. I've just seen my tax bill go up by 30%, a 30% increase in business taxation. I mean, this is anti-business, it's anti-investment. It's almost hard to believe that a party that calls itself Conservative is doing this. Yeah, it is, it is difficult, and I understand that. But oh, it's just, difficult, all right. Yeah, we've just had a £407 billion pounds spent on trying to keep all these businesses up and running. Uh, and many businesses are only here because of uh, the government's help during COVID. All the jobs, the furlough, the self-employed income support scheme money, all the plasterers, electricians and the builders that were told to down tools and go home, they all got grants to help them through that. So, I mean, we can't forget that. 
granted it's tough. I mean, the corporation tax has gone up to 25%, but I believe that's tapered from 19. So lots of the one-man bands out there are earning less than £50,000 a year. They'll still only pay 19% corporation yep. tax. It does go up to 200, uh, up to 250,000. Yep. So it is tapered along the way. And also we've put the um, tax relief in so that when people do buy uh, items for the business, that, they that get 100% tax relief. That was there relief. already and at an even bigger level. No, I don't believe it. it well, it's there on the super tax. Ultimately, but, ultimately, I get your point. Yeah. You decided to lock us down. That was your government policy. The Swedes took a different approach. People in Florida took a different approach. We have a massive, you know, we are paying for lockdown. It was one of the most catastrophic mistakes, I think, ever seen in this country. I mean, boy, we have so much to thank. We have so much to thank Matt Hancock for. What a lovely man. You're facing the electorate. It's going to be, you know, 15, 18 months time. Can you win this seat again of Don Valley? Yeah, I believe so. I don't think they've had a, a member of parliament who stood up for Doncaster uh, like, like that I have. I um, mean, the statistics prove it from the amount of times I spoke about Doncaster. I don't think they've had a mem member of parliament who's fought hard for Doncaster. We've now got a, a, a levelling up bid coming forward, which was announced today, so that's another 20 million for Doncaster. We had 18.6 million in the first round of levelling up for Doncaster, and now we're going to hopefully get an 80 million pound investment zone, which could bring the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, which is just down the road in Sheffield, it could bring that to Don Valley. We get that to Don Valley, we could then end up with Boeing in Doncaster. Right, well, I tell you what, if you do, you'll be in better shape than I think you currently are now. But Nick, either way, thank you for joining us here on Thanks GB News. Thank you very much indeed. Now, let's get some views.